Right. So good day, everyone, and welcome to what is, in fact, the first uh, meeting of the Minimum Viable Product Task Force. So uh, we're very pleased to have you here. Uh, we will be running two sessions in across uh, two uh, time zones for each of these meetings. Uh, our process is to issue a doodle poll. We see who, uh, you know, we uh, try and choose the most popular date. Um, so this is the first uh, of the first meetings for the Oceania and North American regions. There is another meeting scheduled for Europe and Africa Wednesday, New Zealand time. So uh, we will integrate their feedback into the meeting as well. So what I'll do at this point is let me just uh, launch the screen share uh, so we can follow. Uh, is the screen share uh, c uh, coming through f for you, folk? Yep. All right, let me just move this back to that desk desktop. Okay, so we're good to go. So uh, what I'm doing is uh, I appreciate that uh, many of you will know where to find the documentation, but just for the benefit of folk who are new to the OERU and the OER Foundation and where we keep all our records, I thought I would just navigate through to where the documentation and planning uh, is hosted on the wiki. So I'm um, on the home page of Wikieducator at wikieducator.org. At the top of Wikieducator, there's a link here to OERU planning. You click on uh, the OERU planning link and then you will get to where all the documentation uh, relating to the OERU is kept. Uh, there is a detailed planning link. Uh, you can click on there. And this is where we keep uh, track of all the initiatives and activities relating to the design and implementation of the OERU. Uh, here at the top, uh, there is a summary of the active working groups. And what I've done is I've added the MVP task force uh, uh, link uh, here to the active working groups. Uh, and that's how you can access the main uh, planning page of the MVP task force. Another very useful link uh, in, uh, in finding your way around the OERU is this quick links uh, item at the, uh, at the top there, uh, which you know, gives a high level summary of uh, the different components of the OERU ecosystem, uh, including the working groups that I've slotted in the MVP task force. Uh, here as one of the working groups, uh, in active working groups. So just uh, by way of navigation and uh, finding your way around. So if we go to the MVP task force page, I'll click there. Uh, this is the main uh, planning page of the MVP task force. Uh, summary of the aims, the key documents that we're working with, the current list of members of the MVP task force. And the important bit here is our record of, of the meetings we have. And being the first meeting, uh, I've posted a tentative uh, agenda here, which we shared, I believe, yes, yesterday uh, with the group. So here we are. And the first item on the agenda uh, is the welcome and introductions. So from my side, I work here at the OER Foundation. It's my full-time job. A very warm welcome to all. And uh, shall we do a quick round of introductions in the order that people signed up for the meetings. So, Dave, I'd like to hand over to you. Sure. Hi. Uh, I've spoken to most of you yesterday, I think, but um, for those who I haven't met, I'm Dave Lane. I live in Christchurch, New Zealand, and I also work full-time with the Open Education Resource Foundation with, with Wayne. Um, my role is open source technologist, and uh, what I work on is is the tools that we're using to facilitate the collaboration or the, the contribution to um, open education, re open educational resources, and um, I am keen to help build the platform that provides all of these uh, resources to people and uh, makes it easy for them to access and to to build more of them. Yeah. And uh, interesting, of course, uh, we're very much a virtual organization, as uh, Dave is located in Christchurch. I'm based here in Dun Eden's Silicon Valley, which is a little village called Mosgiel, about 15 kilometers south of Dun Eden. Uh, so then let's move over to Brisbane um, and uh, invite Jim.
to the to the floor. Hi everyone. Um, I'm a member of the OER Foundation Board and uh, I have been involved with the OERU since its inception uh, when I was uh, working at the University of Southern Queensland uh, in Toowoomba and I'm now an emeritus professor of that organisation so still maintain my office and uh, I'm interested in again seeing the OERU concept come to fruition. Thanks. Yeah, yeah and, th and thanks very much, Jim, and um, you know, you've been a prominent thought leader of the OERU network, and we wouldn't be uh, where we are today without your foresight and, you know, attention to detail and, you know, helping the, the network progress. So it's in a public recognition, and thank you uh, for everything that you do for the OERU. So uh, moving on then, uh, shall we invite Christine? Hi everyone. Um, I'm. Uh, I feel like I've been repeating myself, but anyway. Um, hi, I'm. Uh, I'm from Montreal, Canada, and um, although I don't have any um, experience with open education resources or content, um, I have uh, lots of experience in uh, writing content and uh, design. Um, I'm going to be working uh, with the group as a consultant uh, on the principles of management course. And um, yeah, and uh, I guess uh, I, I was in New Zealand for six years, so I, I, I know uh, a bit about uh, where these folks live. So that's, that's it. Thanks very much, Christine, and, and, and I do apologize for the multiple meetings that we've been having this week. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. For, for some of the other folk that will be watching the recording, uh, we're currently running the uh, Digital Skills for Collaborative OER Development course live um, at, you know, as, as we speak, and there have been a number of support <laughs> webinars relating to that, and so it's been, it's been a busy week from that perspective. Um, and uh, the OER Foundation has uh, contracted a number of consultants uh, to assist us with the assembly of the courses for the first year of study. And uh, our consultants that are working on these OERU courses are, of course, welcome members of the, uh, the task force and, and hence the many <laughs> sessions this week. But uh, uh, they will decrease in number, that's for sure, Christine. <laughs> uh, Cameron? There we are. Hi. Um, can everybody hear me? Not in here. Okay, cool. Um, I'm Cameron Campbell. Um, like Christine, I used to live in, uh, in New Zealand, um, Christchurch, Dunedin, and for a little tiny bit in Wellington. Um, and uh, back in Montreal now. Um, and I've worked um, as an instructional designer off and on, f well, no, on for a little bit more than a decade, both in New Zealand and in Canada. Um, and my day job is at a commercially learning place. So uh, this is a nice break from um, next, 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 please learn this skill. So I'm quite excited to, uh, to be getting doing this. So yeah, that's me. Yeah, and we, uh, we're very excited to have the caliber of design skills from Montreal uh, assisting us uh, in, this, in this endeavor. So um, let's, let's go back to Australia then, and I'm going to ask uh, Linda uh, to introduce herself. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. My name's Linda Ward, and I'm currently working as an educational designer um, at Charles Sturt University, currently working on um, our in Introduction to Indigenous um, Education for the OERU. Um, we've currently got it up as a, a full course, but we've just started to make it a micro, four micro courses for, I guess, the first year of study for this, um, for the OERU. So we're slowly getting there. Um, so I really just work with academic staff who are teaching staff um, to design their courses and use technology in that as well. So we're still negotiating what our second subject will be. So we're hoping to get um, some decisions made on that shortly. And we're also thinking about how we're going to run our assessment services. So having conversations about that as well. So happy to be on board um, and see this come to fruition quickly. Yeah. And, and, and we're very pleased to have Charles Sturt University as one of you know, the earlier pioneers having you know, completed the first course contribution. And it's in a particularly, a particularly relevant area for the OERU. And you know, having these, the conversations around the assessment is going to be extremely valuable for this group as you know, we plan the implementation of the MVP. So 
very pleased to have you with us. And uh, let me uh, cross the Pacific uh, and uh, you know, move across to the US. Mark, this, um, I, you, I think you might have joined us about 30 seconds after we started. I am recording the meeting that's so, that, so that you're aware of that. That's right. No, that's fine. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about joining late. Um, uh, I take it we're doing introductions now. Uh, so Correct. I'll just uh, jump in. Uh, I'm Mark Singer. I'm at uh, Thomas Edison State University in, in uh, New Jersey. And um, um, I'm happy to, to meet all these new folks. Um, we're looking forward to developing some of the courses that uh, we'll need for the MVP. And uh, um, we're in the fortunate position of being able to lend some assistance uh, not so much technical, but at least content and, and assessment-wise, and uh, um, we're happy to collaborate with uh, with everyone who's on here today. So yeah. thanks for pulling us together. Yes, and uh, Mark, appreciate you taking time out of your evening to join us. Uh, Mark is also the chair of the or, uh, of the standing committee for credit transfer uh, at the OERU, which is an important piece of this puzzle as we as, as we're moving forward uh, in completing MVP. So th thanks for those introductions. Uh, we'll move on uh, straight with the uh, agenda. Uh, you know, the, the second item there is just to uh, sketch the background and context. Um, at the International Partners Meeting at Northwest University in October last year, the partners agreed to prioritize the assembly of a free first year of study uh, leading to an exit credential. And uh, at the first, or in fact, the, the last meeting of the OERU Management Committee uh, last year, we agreed to establish this uh, MVP task force uh, to you know, oversee the, uh, the implementation uh, of the MVP. So that's why we're here. And the, the purpose of this particular meeting is to review uh, the terms of reference uh, to you know to comment and provide feedback and advice on the plan of action that we've drafted uh, and have tabled for discussion, and the outputs of this meeting will then go up through to the next meeting of the OERU Management Committee, uh, which is a the the structure that actually oversees the uh, you know implementation of the OERU. So, so, so at this point, uh, I just want to uh, open the floor to ask if there are any questions of clarity or any items that you feel we need to add to the agenda. And uh, as is practice at our uh, virtual meetings, I uh, take silence to mean assent. Okay, so at this point, it doesn't seem as though we want to uh, add any items, but uh, you know, as as an open meeting, we we will be able to do so at any point. So uh, then, moving on to uh, item four, I've already gone through the navigation of how we get from the uh, uh, homepage of Wiki Educator through to the various planning pages of the MVP task force. We are on the the, the, the homepage of the MVP task force. Uh, well, no, we're actually not on the homepage of the MVP task force. We're actually on the subpage of the MVP task force, which is our meeting agenda. Uh, but you'll find links uh, to the task force homepage, uh, as well as if you uh, uh, get, you know, getting uh, like me, a, a tad forgetful, uh, you can watch the video recording, uh, and it will show you how to get there. Um, so the first thing I would like us to do is to have a look at the uh, terms of reference uh, of the task force. I'll come back to the uh, group list in a moment, but let's just uh, have a look at the terms of reference because then we can also see the uh, suggested composition. Um, we've got a short definition of what minimum viable product is and you know, as, as software development, minimum viable product is not intended to have all the bells and whistles and all the features of uh, fully fledged development, but really to build something that demonstrates the core features uh, of the OERU model. 
uh, which will of course inform our process evaluation. I've already described the background as to how this task force came to be. Uh, the aims as we've articulated here uh, is, is, is that, you know, that we're a dedicated group established on, on recommendation of the OERU Management Committee uh, to focus on the completion of the first year of study uh, for the OERU. And we are working as a community support and leadership group to ensure successful completion of the OERU MVP. And at this point, I just want to reference, and then I'll stop to take uh, feedback. Uh, we have defined what uh, MVP uh, will mean for the OERU first of study. And this was actually discussed at the partners meeting. It's become affectionately known as the Porter Challenge, uh, because uh, David Porter, in, in one of the uh, earlier discussion groups, articulated what uh, he felt a, a minimum viable product should be. Uh, we tweaked and calibrated this a little at, at, at the partners meeting. Uh, we are saying that minimum viable product is a minimum of 10 courses that will be completed and available for delivery uh, by September 2016 uh, so that we can showcase this at the partners meeting scheduled uh, to take place on the 3rd to 5th of October in Inverness, Scotland. Um, it will be hosted on a common platform. Uh, we are authoring all the course materials in Wiki Educator, which are published via a rather smart script to be hosted on WordPress sites. They will be available uh, for delivery from the OERU.org platform, so students will come into the main OERU.org site, uh, where they can then uh, move into their courses. And upon completion of these courses, students will be directed to those institutions who are providing assessment services uh, for these courses or credit transfer services uh, for these courses where they will be awarded a transcript credit uh, towards recognized credentials. Uh, so let me, let me just stop there for a moment and uh, open up to the floor. Uh, are you comfortable with the aims that we've proposed and uh, what our, our shared understanding of um, what minimum viable product is? I hear a lot of assenting. I, I, I'm, I appreciate that. All good. All good. I, I just wanted to check when we say um, completed and available. Uh, for delivery. Delivery means accessible to students? Yes, that, that is the intention, that it will be accessible to students. Uh, if we are lucky, and I'm, uh, well, luck, lucky is not the right word, but uh, I, I would be happy from the perspective of the OER Foundation if we in fact had one or two prototype offerings uh, of those courses before September. But that is, uh, there are a couple of moving parts to, to that challenge because it's all around the credentialing piece and aligning with the sort of the academic years and, you know, this sort of thing with partner institutions. But we are certainly aiming to at least get, uh, you know, a few prototypes uh, running before the October meeting. But the minimum requirement uh, is that we will have these courses available for delivery by, by, by September. Uh, uh, Cameron, does that clarify your question? Okay, cool. Uh, uh, any other comments? Queries? Right. Then moving on then, uh, the, the, the purpose uh, as stated here, uh, to guide and support the implementation of the first year of study. Uh, we, we are functioning as an open think tank and a meeting space you know, for key stakeholders. Uh, to guide the implementation uh, and we work within the existing structures of the the OERU uh, collaboration which includes the relevant working groups so the standing committee for credit transfer the curriculum and program of study working group the OERU management committee the strategic planning working group uh, and of course all this feeds into the council of uh, CEOs so and, you know, we do have cross-representation from a number of these groups in, in the task force. So it's really about bringing, you know, the appropriate community leadership together, the practitioners, you know, the folk like uh, you and I who are actually, you know, getting our hands dirty in the trenches, actually assembling these courses. 
uh, and uh, we are pr providing an authentic OERU environment uh, to start developing uh, community leadership skills uh, within the community, but also widening the base of you know folk that have knowledge of our design practices, uh, which. Uh, you know, funding willing, we would be able to commission into the future as well to assemble more courses. So those are the, the draft purposes we've articulated. Uh, let me just hand back to the floor again uh, to take any comments uh, or feedback or suggestions for improvement. Right, uh, again, taking silence to mean assent. Uh, Let's then move forward. Uh, the membership is straightforward. Uh, you know, folk from the community leaders and representatives from our various working groups, uh, staff at OERU partners who are engaged with or working with the assembly of courses for MVP. Um, and that includes the consultants uh, who the OER Foundation has contracted to help us move uh, MVP product forward. Of course, being an open community, any volunteers who want to join us uh, is most welcome to do so. And I have, uh, we do have a list on the main task force page of the uh, the current membership uh, of, of, of the task force. Uh, so the, I the, might just uh, ask a question about that. Um, I think um, I'd like to be assured that we have uh, all the, the 10 likely courses, the 10, 10 confirmed courses, that we have a, a representative from each of those courses at the institution, or when will we get that? Uh, I see that sort of um, key link to coordinate delivery and quality and the like. Uh, it's important to have someone who's actively engaged with the MVP task force. Is that happening? It, it, it's a good question, Jim. Uh, at this stage, the answer is I'm not sure. My gut feeling is that for all the key institutions that are part of this, we do have a representative, but I haven't checked it at that level of detail. So what I've done is I've noted an, an action item to come out of this meeting uh, to ensure as far as possible that we have a representative from each institution that is engaged with uh, MVP on the task force. But from memory, I think we're there, but I, I'll just need to confirm that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Comments? So, uh, in terms of meetings, uh, I, I, this, the suggestion we're making is that we convene roughly every six weeks un, un, until we achieve MVP. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will convene two sessions of the synchronous meetings. Uh, and uh, in the traditions of the OER Foundation and open source software development, uh, we work on a rough consensus and running code model. Uh, so we, at, during these meetings, we aim to achieve rough consensus in terms of taking decisions to implement things. So what I'm pointing out is we don't function as a, a democracy in the sense of requiring a 50, you know, a 50 percent plus one uh, vote in order to take decisions forward. Uh, if three people attend the meeting uh, and we decide to do something, those are the decisions that are implemented as we move forward. And we're able to do this because we keep transparent records of everything we do so that even if people are unable to attend the synchronous sessions, at any time they would be available to provide comment, feedback and suggestions to informing decision making either through the discussion pages on the wikis or through the uh, the main feedback list. So let me just uh, uh, leave, uh, leave it there for a moment just to confirm that we are comfortable with the decision-making model uh, we use at the OER Foundation in terms of uh, guiding this process. Okay. I'm very pleased to hear uh, silence. Uh, I wonder how long a decision like that would take at the average uh, uh, 
uh, Senate. <laughs> I'm being a tad facetious. I'm moving years on. Years and years and years. <laughs> But uh, to be fair to universities, they're one of a handful of organizations that survived the Industrial Revolution. So uh, there, there, there must be some merit in the, the, the processes that are adopted there. Okay, so just a, this is just a procedural thing. Typically, how we schedule meetings, uh, we will set up a doodle poll uh, to confirm availability. We then attempt to uh, choose the most popular time uh, and then... Uh, we send out a calendar invite for the meetings, and the agendas, as you would have seen, are, are, are posted in the wiki before the time. So anybody who's unable to attend, or if you want to add an item to the agenda, being an open wiki, anybody is free, uh, free to do that. Uh, and at this point, it might be uh, a good point to come back to the early agenda item just to reference the task force list that we have. Uh, the OER Foundation runs, uh, that's very interesting, so there's a bad link there, I'll need to fix that. Uh, we do run a, a group site uh, where we have groups for the various, uh, or group lists for the various working groups uh, of which the MVP task force is one. Uh, and this is the main communication channel that we use uh, to communicate via email. And of course, uh, you can search for previous posts on the web. Uh, simply by posting to the um, list address, uh, we, uh, your communications will be stored as a public record of everything we're doing. So let me just get back then to the agenda, uh, at least the uh, discussion of the terms of reference. Uh, there are different ways in which we can engage, I've already mentioned this. Um, either through the list, right? Uh, we have a permanent meeting room, which is this meeting room. So when meetings are scheduled, uh, they'll take place uh, in this meeting room. So you can store that link uh, if you like, but uh, we'll, which will be repeated in each of the instructions. We also have a, a, a technology supported by the OER Foundation called OERU Chat. Um, and you can create an account uh, on OERU chat. Just waiting for it to load there. Um, the, you know, the OERU channel. Uh, this is uh, manned by staff of the OER Foundation. Bear, bear in mind, we are uh, a small uh, operation with only two full-time staff members, both in the New Zealand time zone. Uh, but uh, pretty much during daylight hours and some of the weird uh, hours we keep in the evenings, uh, you, there's a good chance you might find us here. And if you've got an immediate pressing question that you need to ask, uh, please feel free to pop into the chat forum. Uh, I think a good place to post would be the general OERU forum. So there are um, uh, you know, multiple communication channels, and each of these channels uh, keeps a record. Uh, of, of the, the conversation so that we have a transparent record of uh, everything that's happening in the OERU. So those, uh, those are the terms of reference. Um, if there are any comments now for refining and improving this draft as it stands, now's a good time uh, to note those. Uh, if not, I would be glad to entertain a proposal that we adopt the terms of reference. So I've had I'm happy to propose that um, if, if you need a formal proposal. Th thanks, Jim. And I'll, I've noted the thumbs up of Mark as uh, you know a second and, and an agreement. And in the absence of any objections, uh, we will take the current draft of the terms of reference to be what guides our group. Uh, now the uh, important part of the meeting uh, with uh, due thanks to, to Jim Taylor who uh, spends his uh, retirement hours uh, thinking about implementing the OERU. Uh, Jim has spent a lot of time uh, putting together a, a high-level implementation plan. So the draft that we see here 
I, I just want to acknowledge uh, Jim's work in you know, crystallizing uh, the, the key components of this plan. And I, I didn't ask uh, before the time, Jim, but did, did you want to speak at all to the plan in terms of you know, what, uh, what your rationale was behind this? Uh, you're most welcome to do so. Uh, just a brief comment. Um, as we all appreciate this uh, project of coordinating activities across uh, numerous institutions um, using different technologies is quite complex and people join the project with different levels of awareness of the history of the project. So I endorse the use of quick links just as a, a ready reference for people who might be wanting to share what we're doing with colleagues um, and just remind themselves about having access and um, to the, the key components of the project. And the MVP implementation plan is uh, similarly uh, a challenge in terms of coping with uh, lots of record keeping and lots of communication that will occur as we move towards the, the launch. Um, so I, I try to come up with an overview. I just thought to myself, well, what are the key issues uh, from my perspective? And I came up with a proposal to use an implementation uh, plan that we could update periodically. And uh, I think I've worked with Wayne on refining it and Dave. And the thing that's open at the moment is really to get institutions uh, to commit to dates for you know, various target dates for delivery and so on. And uh, you'll see that in the plan, we've got a, a number of dates uh, throughout that are suggested, like just on capacity de development when and the DS4 OER course that's running. And we've, we've at the next level, Dane, you'll see that we've got a 31st of March date for pedagogical specifications for the technology platform. We've done a fair bit of work on that. But other dates um, are really open and flexible as a few, what I'd say, suggested dates there. So I think it would be helpful if we could propose a number of dates uh, for other elements of the plan that need to you know, be activated before we we achieve anything. So I've suggested a few there that uh, are key right at the bottom of the thing, the marketing that Wayne's highlighted, but also um, I think the key target dates are the, we've nominated the 1st of September uh, right at the top there and also highlighted the meeting in Inverness. So I think we really have to work back from those dates and see what we can achieve rather than necessarily treat it as being, you know, ultra flexible. So that's my suggestion and why I thought an implementation plan that we could share with colleagues, just give a snapshot without drilling down to too much detail on any particular issue uh, might be a useful way to coordinate our activities. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, uh, and thanks and thanks for that, Jim. I, I have to say, just from my perspective, the uh, this particular format and structure, ha, uh, you know, is has really simplified uh, what is, in fact, a, quite a complex project working across multiple institutions and multiple regions and and the like. So, uh, I mean, I, I think this is really going to help us in terms of moving forward. Uh, I just wanted to point out the way I've set this up. Um, the most recent version of this plan updates automatically. So if, if a change is, is, is made, uh, the, 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 the date of the revision will automatically update. So you know, when you do come to this page, you'll see, okay, it was last edited on the 16th of March. So I'm just pointing out, we'll just use this one page for, you know, as, as it updates, those, those dates will automatically update. Uh, the other thing is I've, I've noted as an action item from this meeting, as, as Jim has suggested, that we progress uh, the determination of the dates for, you know, key components uh, of, of this plan, you know, particularly where we, uh, you know, have these dates to be determined. Uh, there obviously needs to be a bit of conversation and 
discussion about that, but I have noted that as an action item. So at this point, let me let me uh, open the floor for comments. What I will do is just go into the de uh, some of the detail of the MVP courses after I've just taken feedback at this point. You know, do you think this is a good way of structuring the information, and are you comfortable with us moving forward in seeking um, you know uh, dates uh, due, uh, for the various components of the plan? So let me open the floor there. Any feedback and comments? Questions of clarity. Right. Again, on our principle of uh, silence uh, being assent, I think we can then move forward to the next uh, the next steps. Uh, where we are at in terms of the actual planning, um, we've actually made pretty good progress. Uh, at this stage of the plan, we should be able to achieve minimum viable product. I am reasonably confident on an 80-20 basis that we uh, are going to achieve it. In fact, uh, depending on one or two contingencies, we might exceed a minimum viable product this year. Uh, the minimum viable product is happening in the context of two identified exit credentials. One is a certificate in general studies, which is a first year exit credential at Thompson Rivers University. Uh, the other is a nomination proposed by Clive Mulholland, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of the Highlands and Islands at the International Partners Meeting and the CEOs Meeting, is the Certificate of Higher Education. And there are a number of activities uh, we are progressing uh, at the University of Highlands and Islands uh, around uh, the Certificate of Higher Education. Uh, so those are the, 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 the two credentials. So the selection of courses uh, has been informed to a large extent by what these exit credentials can accommodate. And the one critical requirement of a course being selected for MVP is that at least one partner institution must be able to provide transcript credit for the course that is in, um, in or nominated for MVP. Well, this isn't actually a nomination. These are you know, actual developments that are happening. And so the list of courses, we currently do have 10 confirmed courses uh, for MVP. And we can quickly run through the list. Uh, Creating Sustainable Futures this is a first year level course that will be offered by Otago Polytechnic. I have commissioned an external consultant to assist with the completion of that course. It's an interesting course because we'll be able to offer uh, assessment at two exit levels, at first year level, which is level five in the New Zealand system, but simultaneously uh, we will be able to provide an assessment at level seven, uh, which is a third year bachelor's degree level. Obviously the assessment is you know, at a higher level testing, higher competencies. But this, in fact, would also then serve at uh, responding to one of the key uh, KPIs of the OERU strategic plan around innovation prototypes. So I just wanted to mention that uh, we, it, apart from achieving MVP, we do now have a, a course in the mix that will be looking at these other innovations. Uh, the principles of management, uh, we have both the uh, commissioned learning designers here today. Uh, Cameron and uh, Christine are assisting us with um, with that. And I have a contract that says it will be finished by the 30th of June. So <laughs> I'm confident that, uh, that that's going to happen. Uh, principles of marketing. Uh, we, uh, Randy Frischer, who's based in Ottawa, uh, it will be assisting us there. I also have a contract which says that's going to be finished by the 30th of June. Uh, corporate communication, uh, the, co uh, the cons uh, consultant and contract has been confirmed. Uh, there's just one or two pieces I need to uh, communicate before uh, 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 you know, uh, announcing publicly who's helping us there. Uh, the regional relations in Asia and the Pacific, the full course is completed and we've actually made considerable progress with the restructuring of the published pages in micro course format. Uh, 
uh, we are working there on you know, finalizing the assessment. Uh, Indigenous Australia, as Linda pointed out to us, the full course is completed and colleagues at CSU are working internally uh, to uh, reassemble and think about the assessment for a micro course uh, option. Uh, art appreciation and techniques, the full course is completed. Again, uh, we are restructuring for micro courses. Uh, introduction to critical reasoning, uh, the full course is completed. It currently sits on uh, a Google site. I would be uh, a lot happier if we had it available for MVP platform. Uh, in a micro course format. Um, we have confirmed uh, introduction to psychology level one will be uh, developed by Quantum Polytechnic University and assessed by Quantum Polytechnic University. Uh, it, uh, I've had recent team discussions. Uh, we will I, uh, have this complete before minimum viable product. And Introduction to Research Methods in Psychology is an open course. It's already completed. It was developed by TRU. Uh, we are looking at, re, uh, you know, to what extent uh, or what's involved in restructuring this for the, the MVP platform. The full course was developed in the wiki, so it wouldn't be too hard to use our publication model. The last point I do just want to mention, the, the requirement, one of the requirements at uh, Thompson Rivers University for uh, residency is that uh, six credits, which is two North American courses, need to be, needs to be taken locally in order for learners to earn the uh, certificate in general studies. Uh, but fortunately, I believe we will uh, achieve that objective because art appreciation and techniques, as well as introduction to psychology, are both TRU courses that are just about complete, so we will be able to meet that residency requirement uh, for the Certificate of General Studies. So, uh, that's where we're at at the moment in terms of confirmed courses. I continue to think about uh, strong candidates uh, for moving up into this list. Um, Athabasca University has started work on reconfiguring a microeconomics course um, for MVP in the wiki. Uh, I haven't had feedback yet as to whether Athabasca University is at the position to offer credit at this point in time. However, that said, uh, it is a course that has a CLEP exam available, so the college level exam preparation. And, and Mark, you need to help me out here. You know, it's an agency or a body that provides examinations for certain courses that a large number of colleges and universities in the US would accept and when I last looked I think a CLEP exam costs about 80 US dollars so Mark if you can just help me there I'm, I, I'm not sure if my information is correct no no that's that's absolutely right Wayne um, the CLEP exam program is operated by the College <coughs> Board which it, it's well known in the US uh, they also um, um, administer the SAT exam, which is the, the primary admissions uh, exam for, for university level, and the AP program, Advanced Placement. Uh, and you're right that it's, uh, uh, they charge about $80, although um, at this point, the uh, exams must be uh, administered at a test site, and the test sites themselves may possibly uh, charge an additional $15 or $20, so it, it varies from place to place. They do uh, fortunately have a, lo a number of locations outside of the US, particularly in East Asia and in the Middle East uh, and a number of other locations as well. Okay, um, so I'm, one of the items I'm just noting there is I just follow up information or, or you know, a bit more research about the test sites because that's important information we will need to convey uh, uh, to the learners, prospective learners when we get to that point. Uh, you know, at least directing them to the clips, the clip sites where they can find the information. So that's all good. The other course which I uh, am potentially very, very excited about, uh, it's a little bit of work uh, and thinking we need to do around this uh, before we can move it into a definite course, is a course, and this is a label, a temporary label I'm using at, at the moment, uh, is uh, learning in a digital age. So my, my 
personal vision is to have a first year level course which actually covers you know key skills that are required of the 21st century in terms of supporting learning you know how do you find OER how do you discern OER you know how do you prepare a, a learning pathway that is based on this open model uh, you know how do you utilize the you know, digital technologies for supporting your learning uh, and ideally to be able to have a course like that offered as an OERU course uh, at, that we can recommend that learners who are embarking on this journey uh, you know take as a you know kind of a, a first you know try the OERU type of course and that this would be available either for credit at uh, uh, Thomas Edison State University or any one of the other partners so there's a conversation at the moment to to figure out what what are the requirements for uh, you know accrediting an open course like this if if it is indeed a, indeed possible at um, uh, Thomas Edison State University. Uh, but what we do know is they do have a curriculum, and I've seen the curriculum and have to say uh, it is pretty much a ninety percent fit to what the kind of course I would love to see. So Mark, I Mark, I don't know if you want to add anything to that conversation. Well, uh, no, I, I would only add that uh, several months ago we uh, shared the outline for the course with our, our colleagues at uh, Wollongong and at uh, Canberra. And um, I believe that was because they themselves were also developing courses that had some overlap with that. So um, we're uh, hoping to continue to collaborate with them on, you know, on completion as well as anyone else in the OERU would be interested. Absolutely, and I've, I've made a note of an action item here that we I follow up and actually contact Wollongong and Canberra to, to make sure or establish where they are um, uh, at this stage of the journey around that. Uh, I can also confirm that the OER Foundation will invest funding to support the learning design and assembly of this course on condition I can find at least one institution that would provide uh, credit services for transcript credit. So that's where we're at there. Um, and uh, Wayne, brief comment. Um, I'd just like to endorse uh, this initiative and uh, suggest that we make it a priority if we can, uh, because I think it will lay the foundation for you know more effective learning outcomes in, in the other courses. So if it was possible to fast track um, the learning in a digital age course, then I think we should you know, do what we can to facilitate that. Thanks. That's a good point. A, a good point. Sorry, somebody. Uh... Yeah, it's me. I, I can't help myself. I, I, I agree. Um, because one of the things that I saw when I was working in uni and, and Polytech was that students in, in face to face traditional courses don't know how to be students. Um, and this presumption that we have that they're going to just somehow automatically know how um, it worries me because it feels like we're adding a layer of cognitive load that they can't get past in some cases. And then you add in online and this kind of thing. And yeah, I just think we're setting some people, some people, not all, but some people up for failure if we don't teach them how to be students in this kind of environment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm nodding my head. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the, the sense of consensus rising about how important <laughs> <laughs> this this component is which uh, what I'm going to suggest is I think we need to cross the net possibly wider across the network and proactively uh, ask our focal points at each of the OERU partner members about the likelihood and or possibility of providing assessment and credentialing services for a course of this nature. Uh, Mark, one quick question. Uh, would, uh, would it be possible or uh, would it be appropriate uh, to share the curriculum outline of the PLA 300 course, or, or is that kind of a an internal document? No, no, no. By all means, um, I, I think this course in particular lends itself to to sharing. I mean, that is sort of the point of the course, after all. No, uh, please. It, if you like, Wayne, if you, I think you have a copy of what we uh, our most up to date version. Um, I, I could share it, or, or if you have every, access to everyone's uh, information, or you could post it on the on the wiki, however you prefer. Uh, so, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I, I've, the version that you sent through to me is the one the one that I have, 
uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll clear it that you know we're posting it uh, with permission from uh, from Thomas Edison State University. I'll apply a share alike license to make sure that if anybody improves ah, thank you. ideas, they can't have to share it back with you. You're right. That is not on there currently. That's that's absolutely right. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. I appreciate that, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this would be an amazing course to to have for the OERU and. Uh, Let's make that a priority. And the uh, there are a couple of uh, wannabes here. Um, again, uh, depending on how our fiscal situation looks, there's a strong likelihood that I would be able to uh, find a little funding to assist with the assembly of these courses if we don't have takers in the network. But the ones we're thinking of is like macroeconomics because there is a CLEP exam available. So I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, where, where can we find uh, examination points so that we can ensure credit because this is an important piece of the puzzle. Financial and or management accounting is a possibility, but what I'm concerned about uh, having studied as an accountant as in my first life that there are, uh, you know, internationalization issues with uh, subjects like that. The other one, which is uh, an interesting one, is uh, Thomas Edison State University have this course, Science and Nutrition, which seems to me to be like an amazing course to have because uh, we actually don't really have much in the sciences. Uh, and uh, it's a kind of course which I think would serve our target population rather well. So I mean, those are you know, you know, possible candidates on the wannabe list at the moment. And of course, if there are any other want to be candidates that could slowly filter on up through uh, to the confirmed list that, that that would be great so that's where we are in uh, terms Wayne. of course development yes mark please sorry wayne just to add one one thing to that um both those courses you you just mentioned science of nutrition and financial accounting we um have standalone assessments for those they're in our tsep program which is administered uh by the internet using an online proctor. So it could be used anywhere in the world. I would imagine that um, we've developed those courses mostly uh, internally. Um, I would imagine those assessments could only improve by, um, uh, by being shared with um, folks here. So I'm sure we could make copies available if anyone's interested in having a look and, and you know, uh, being willing to, to make suggestions as to how to improve them. Thank, thank you very much, Mark. I, I, I sense that we're going to take you up on your offer. <laughs> Great. Uh, any, any other questions and comments about the, the courses we have on the list thus far? Uh, yes, Wayne, this is Rajiv. Um, at uh, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, I know we've had some initial discussions about a potential first year exit credential. Um, we're not there yet, but we're talking about a potential first year certificate in arts. Uh, but for us, the issue is not not as much about residency as it is about six credits. So again, two sort of North American courses uh, of first year English. And so for us, that's one of the uh, hurdles that will need to be crossed, even if it's something that we, uh, whether we look at repurposing uh, courses from Sailor uh, or elsewhere. Um, but it, I think in our minds, that's one of the courses that we might need to look at in the future um, because there is this openness to, to that credential. Um, oh, okay. Uh, oh, fantastic, Rajiv. I'll pick up on your comments uh, in a moment, but if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, I, I, I think I might have missed you uh, early on in the meeting, just for the benefit of uh, other colleagues. Sure, yeah. So, sorry, I popped in uh, late, which is why I missed that. Uh, I'm Rajiv Jandiani. I'm a faculty member in psychology at Kwantlen Polytechnic University in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Um, but I'm working on the course that Wayne is highlighting right now, the Introduction to Psychology 1, uh, which is one of KPU's contributions. Um, but I worked on the Research Methods course from TRU as well. Um, but I should also add, uh, Wayne, that um, the other sort of follow-up, uh, other than first-year English, may actually be again in psychology. Uh, one of the reasons why we labeled it as Intro Psych 1 is because there is an Intro Psych 2, uh, which is a complementary suite of uh, topics in this survey course. Um, yeah. And so whether it's us or whether it's another OERU member building that course, um, that would provide what anyway would be recognized as first year psychology. Um, and when you look at the entire year, first year psychology, that itself has a CLEP exam as well. Uh, so we might 
look into the future, look at more flexible ways to, to assess the courses when we have these two courses put together. Yeah. I, I, I'm very excited to hear about the developments at, uh, at KPU exploring a, a certificate of, what was it, a certificate of arts, did you say? Yes, a first year certificate of arts. Um, it's pretty flexible. And other than, yeah, other than, uh, I mean, of the 10 courses, other than the two which need to be first year English, um, the rest just need to be uh, uh, um, university transferable courses in any subject area. So it's very flexible outside of the English. So um, I'm, I'm, in terms of an action item, what I'm sitting thinking of doing here is maybe adding, uh, you know, tentative exit awards um, here on the list and then referencing the Certificate of Arts at, at KPU and then maybe following up with uh, who, uh, our uh, uh, focal point contact at, at KPU and I'll, I'll copy you in as well, Rajiv. Um, just to see, because maybe they need to be on this task force. You see what I'm saying? Because if I look at the collection of courses we've got here, we, we will exceed six credits. Or, or I mean, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you might even want to reuse one of these. You already got three credits here. Yeah, and absolutely. I think there's still some hurdles to work out, uh, but but we've identified that as a potential candidate uh, as as a, as a credential. Okay. So 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 what I'm I'm asking is, would it be okay for me to list here, you know, tentative, you know, subject to further approvals and exploration? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I, I would think so. I mean, I think. Um, uh, again, this is I'm speaking out uh, beyond my my level of authority over here, sure. uh, but it is a discussion that has begun at Quantlin. So it's something that I would follow up on uh, with, uh, for example, our our president, who's also been on the board. Okay. Now that that's that's, uh, that's very exciting news. Yeah. Wayne and Rajiv, I think that's great news. But um, what I'd suggest is that politically, it might be more appropriate to be a little more cautious um, with this open documentation and uh, the complexity of focus of what we're doing. So I would be more comfortable from, a, from my own perspective if we had a little more endorsement from, you know, the president or whichever board or Senate needs to give a, a little bit of a, a go ahead to nominate it as a potential cause. So I would just be a little more conservative here. Thanks. Yeah, Jim, that, Jim. Makes good, that makes good yeah. sense to me. That, that's good advice, Jim. Um, and I, 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 you know, we should work for, uh, move forward in that way. I've, I've been working too long in open. You see, I just document everything openly. <laughs> but uh, that, that said, I, I might have an offline conversation with you know Poker Quantum and find you know just ask you know how are things going right and um, we you know we're busy doing this. Um, uh, is this something that you want listed there? Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing, if I may mention, uh, I've been having conversations recently with a group uh, that I think, uh, Wayne, you've been in touch with as well at Carleton University in Ottawa. Um, and they, uh, a few months ago, released what is an, a certificate in blended and online teaching, um, which is a, a graduate certificate that they offer. Uh, and they've now openly licensed the entire certificate, all of the modules. Um, and we're starting to see other institutions in Canada repurpose those and offer those in-house. Um, but when we talk about, you know, learning in a digital age, um, this is an interesting uh, potential reuse case, I think. Um, and over the next four months, uh, they are looking at building a, a number of additional modules, um, including on topics like open access, OER, open data, um, so again, this is not precisely learning in a digital age, uh, but I, uh, yes, I'm familiar with uh, familiar with the course because uh, I've had conversations. Do, do you perhaps uh, do, do you perhaps have a link for that, uh, Rajiv? Because oh, yeah, the actual course itself. Because if you do, if you could just send that through on the list, sure. because I'm 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 uh, well not in the chat. Uh, you can send it offline on the email list. That'll be fine. Because I just want to document because I suspect that there will be quite a lot of material there available for reuse. There is. There's quite a bit. Um, 
And that, of course, together with Tony Bates' uh, open textbook on teaching in a digital age is another resource. But I was most excited about the new modules that they will be developing over the next few months. And when I spoke with them, they indicated a real openness to feedback, suggestions for what else they might develop. And so I think if they know that um, learning in a, dig in a digital age is a priority development for the OERU, uh, it might even inform uh, their development priority. I, I don't think it might. I think it will. <laughs> Thanks for that, Rajiv. Any any other comments in terms of the curriculum of, of where we're at? We've got a, a couple of uh, uh, important action items to follow up here. Um, at this stage, uh, in terms of the dates, uh, yeah, we've covered that. I think we've pretty much covered all the items. Uh, I'm assuming that we are comfortable with the high level action plan uh, and that we can then you know take this and move it forward noting the the, the, the key action items we we discussed during the meeting is that the general sense i have from the group there's lots of silence um, i just wanted to i just wanted to ask one question um, i think something maybe mark you said earlier it interested me the, the topic of proctoring, um, and I'm just wondering if I, this is this is an area that I don't know very much about. But I'm just wondering if it would be worth us looking to be very open in documenting the kind of proctoring uh, or identity, I suppose, identity um, verification methods that are available for us to use in in allowing the completion of these. Um, uh, assessments, because I think that will be something of interest to prospective any prospective participants in the MVP. Yeah, I, I don't know of any services that are currently open, but that that area is changing very rapidly. It's only in the last year that mm -hmm. we've gone to an online proctoring service. It's a private organization, but um, <coughs> the, the, I'm sure there's lots um, we can find out that's beyond my my current knowledge of, uh, about that. Uh, yeah. I'll see what I can find. It. I, just think it, I just think it's something we should be, um, we should just be very aware of is, is potentially a, a contentious area because I know, um, I know that there are a lot of different uh, people trying to work out how to do these things at the moment. I also know that from an IT perspective, most uh, many of them are are not valid in the sense that they don't actually provide any confidence in gra in, in real terms of the. Uh, in, um, identity validation. They, they, some of them are sort of snake oil. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. you can you can pay a lot for a proprietary service, and and it actually doesn't really do much to um, ensure that you're testing the person you think you're testing. Yeah, you, if you know any more about it, by all means, that's. Um, I'd like to know more about mm. it as well. Yeah, I just think that's a, that's a, that's an area that that we, if we can provide re resources for. For partners in that area, I think that would be a very valuable thing. Good. Yeah. So, colleagues, the, the last item on the agenda is uh, a, a question and a, a request to, for us just to think about the the office bearers for for this particular group. Uh, I mean, while I'm happy to chair and run these meetings, that you know, that's all good. I I love doing this. But it would be good to have, you know, an alternate chair uh, as well as uh, some secretarial help. By sec secretary, we mean uh, the recording of the video gets posted, and then we just do a, a very succinct summary of the decisions that was was taken. And I would really appreciate uh, uh, a few extra volunteers and helpers to assist with this task, particularly. Uh, and I don't want these meetings to be delayed because I'm traveling or, or, or something like that. So I'm, it's an open question, are there any volunteers uh, out there who would uh, be interested in assisting as an alternate chair? Uh, the, com the commitment would be scheduling uh, two meetings of an hour uh, every six weeks. That's basically what it is. This I is one of those times that silence doesn't mean assent. I, I want that noted. <laughs> that, that, that is noted. And also, uh, I, I, of course, we're an open group, but I'm, there's not an expectation if you're feeling particularly guilty as a consultant <laughs> that, 
that you're not putting your hand up, um, you, you wouldn't be paid for this work. So I'm, I'm uh, just kind of saying that um, maybe one of our OERU partners should have a think about this. So look, at this point, I'm putting it out there. Uh, I will continue the conversation offline and shoulder tap a few folk and say, hey, uh, would you mind uh, stepping up to the plate and just helping us out here a little? Uh, we've got many Wait, items. Wayne, just, uh, it, although it would be, I think it would be preferable to have someone um, in, a, in a different organization acting as the uh, secondary um, ultimate chair, uh, just to provide a bit of organizational diversity. Um, if, if, if all else fails, I would put my hand up. And, and does that mean you're putting your hand up for a secretary? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be happy to do that too, yeah. Cheers. Thanks for that, Dave. Thanks for that. Okay, I, I, I'll follow up offline and see if I can cajole uh, leading thinkers in this space to uh, consider helping out here. But I do appreciate your time. I, I think we've made good progress, and uh, this is what is needed to ensure that we complete MVP. Closing comments, thoughts? Just a quick comment. I think it was a really useful meeting, and the, the Zoom technology worked well for me and looks to work well for everyone else. So I think it's a, a very useful addition to the suite of um, communication tools that we use. Thanks. And, and thanks for that, Jim. Uh, we searched long and hard, even though uh, Zoom is sadly proprietary, uh, but it's a hosted service. They do at least provide uh, 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 workable support for Linux clients because you, as you appreciate, all OER foundation staff are not allowed to use any non-free software. <laughs> and so we have to make sure we've got technologies that <laughs> work with our stuff. <laughs> but thanks for that, Jim. No, we they want to. For I, I have worth, to. I'm, I'm, okay. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry, I was just going to say, for what it's worth, I'm actually uh, I've been I've been um, writing an email to them uh, as I in, in, I'm snatching away instances of time in this discussion because I'm providing them with some bug fixes for their uh, for their Linux client as we speak. So because <laughs> there's still there's still a bit of uh, problems, but they've been very responsive, so I have to give them credit for that. And I, I was going to say all I was going to say was that I've experienced some very expensive versions of this and some of the open source ones. And so far, at least, this has been the most stable I've ever had anything to do with. Yeah, th th thanks for that, uh, Cameron. It's good to get that uh, kind of feedback because, you know, working with so many partners across so many institutions with so many sy different systems, uh, this uh, has, you know, the testing we've done these past two weeks has worked well for us. The recordings, uh, they managed to get recordings to work on a Linux des desktop, which sometimes can be a, f a challenge for some of our proprietary friends. So that's all good, and uh, it's it's affordable from our perspective. So it's it's been a good solution for us. Yeah. Colleagues, I appreciate your time. I'm going to bring the meeting to a close. Let's let's adjourn. I'll uh, post the recording pretty soon and. Please, uh, when we document the decisions and action items, it will be uh, posted in the wiki. Uh, if you can improve or uh, if you feel that you can present a more accurate uh, and reasonable summary of this meeting, by all means, it's uh, go ahead. You're free, you're free to improve on, on, on uh, the summary of the meeting. So thanks very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for long. long.